Hello YouTube, this is Dakota from Botai Media, and today we have another installment of the Reviews Roundup where I go over my reviews and kind of mini ratings of projects that, that came out, mixtapes, EPs, albums, for the month of April 2024 because I'm a little behind as usual. So without any further ado, let's hop into it. Uh, we are starting with Riot Death Wish, the Death Wish EP. Uh, after a slew of underwhelming and kind of boring Riot tunes uh, these last couple years, uh, this new Death Wish EP is definitely the step in the right direction. Uh, some of these tracks actually have life and energy to them uh, that their kind of halftime dubstep uh, just wasn't fostering previously. And I will give this a bowtied 6 out of 10. Then we got Beast Boys with Wings and Fangs, uh, one of the most well-crafted, well-sounding rhythm albums to date. Uh, Beast Boy manages to find a sublime balance of bright, melodic synths and dark, crunchy bass lines in what can really only be described as peak rhythm. Uh, there is a certain charm about this record in ways that others don't, and while I do prefer the more melodic Wings portion of the project, uh, Fangs brings its own punch that is hard to ignore. I will score this a Bowtide 7. Then we've got Fairlane with Genesis. Uh, the modern mellow dub rock fusion has already become quite stale for me, uh, and even then, this EP's style is derivative, boring, and soulless. Um, I know Fairlane can be an elite producer, but this just isn't the right direction. So uh, please go back to your original self. Uh, the streaming numbers aren't worth it here, Fairlane. Uh, we'll give this a bow tied four. Then we got Paper Skies with Wireframe, a pretty solid debut from one of the most likable producers in the color-based scene. Um, some tracks tend to fall into generic cliches and tones, but overall I thought it was a more, uh, more than serviceable record with some standout tracks. And I will score this Bowtide 7. We got Mike Shift with Thousand Miles. Uh, I think there's some gold to be found in this EP. It just really isn't properly sifted through, I would say. Uh, there's some really neat sound design and production elements, but a majority of the project suffered from poor mixing and weaker vocals. Uh, a bit more polishing, and Mike Shift will be a premier producer in no time. But for now, I will score this about tied 5. Then we got Mr. Bill with Mechanomorphic. Uh, numerous times throughout uh, this extensive track list, I was amazed by its sound design and creativity. Uh, Mr. Bill brings out another action-packed, dense, and wonky project of dubstep, halftime, and purely electronic elements. Uh, there are times uh, when the songs do seem to feel more sonically disjointed from one another, but overall I found that its diversity and remarkable mixing outweighed most of the negative feelings I had. And I will score this about tied 8. Then we got Sleepnet with... Two, uh, Noisia may be dead, but it can exist through Sleep Nets, Sleep Nets impeccable Nero funk production. Uh, this EP has all of the intense sound design and quality mixing that made Noisia special, uh, but now with just a more focused tonality. And I will this a Bowtide 8. Then you got Zavi's Spitfire. Uh, Zavi produces yet another great glitchy and futuristic project with his Spitfire EP. Uh, while none of the projects here hit the kind of highs of some of previous some of his previous work, uh, I still think uh, this is Zavi to its core uh, in both its sound design and style, and I'm a big fan of it. And I'll give it a bow tie seven. Then we've got Affinity with Lunar One. Uh, in the realm of melodic dubstep, this is a cut above the rest. Uh, the emotions are actually packing a punch, and the production manages to break out of the norms for the most part uh, to make the listening experience actually quite unique for once. And I'll give this Bowtide 7. Then we've got Dyadic the Third Kind, an absolute masterclass of variety, sound design, and storytelling. Dyadic's debut record will uh, be hard to top with cons its conceptual narrative and stellar production. Uh, one may assume that this is just a heavy-hitting bro-step album, but no, there is so much more tonal and stylistic variety here. Whether it's bouncing around drum step, rhythm, D&B, glitch, or even reggaeton, uh, Dyadic manages to keep the holistic track list so in sync with itself. Uh, there wasn't a moment where anything fell out of place or unnecessary, uh, and this is definitely a contender for bass record of the decade. I'll give this a bow tied 9. Then we got OK with Future Unfold. Uh, it's very OK style, like the producer's style. Uh, this EP is an amalgamation of random ideas, tones, and genres with varying success. Uh, I just felt like the EP ultimately kind of felt strange. It was a weird listen that gave me a bit of tonal whiplash. I'll give it a bow tied five. Then we've got Taylor Swift, the Tortured Poets Department. I know this came out forever ago, but uh, I've been late to the party. But uh, yeah, this is Taylor's most boring record to date. The lackadaisical production from Jack Antonoff's tracks mixed with some of the, her worst songwriting. Um, it's just not a good look for the biggest artist in the world right now. And I'll give this a Bowtide 5. We've got Tourist with Memory Morning, uh, primarily playing around a dense, progressive, and garage house sound. Uh, Memory Morning could easily be the soundtrack to life's uh, dream sequences. Uh, picking up uh, with more kind of lighthearted, awakened tracks, uh, the back half of this record uh, is where I think it truly shines, uh, and it picks up a lot in the back end. And overall, I think its um, atmosphere is, is one that puts this record above others like it, and I will score this a bow tied 7.
Then we've got Hyperbeam with the Unexplained, who is Omnom and the Odd Mob together. But yeah, this is just a kind of generic Deep House rave project. There really isn't much else to it. The songs aren't even overly explosive or energetic. They're kind of just there. I'll give this about type five. Then we've got Justice with Hyper Drama. Justice is back and in full force. Uh, dark, brooding, electro house, funk instrumentation, and brilliant features. Uh, Hyper Drama is easily a new renaissance for this French duo. Uh, collectively, this record is a marvelous, well planned experience that, uh, yeah, from beginning to end, just is incredible. Um, and most of the tracks actually do individually have their own moments to shine. And I will give this a bow tide eight. We got Cone Sound with Evocation. Uh, yeah, as always, Cone Sound is showing off their ability to mix modern classical instrument instrumentation and modern electronic sounds to perfection. Uh, this may not be their most out there project to date, but uh, it's still a Bowtide 9. And finally, we've got Pauline Her and John Casey with Collision. Uh, some of Pauline Her and John Casey's best work to date, I must say. Um, sometimes the tracks fall into generic trap tropes, but for the most part, this is a well thought out and unique set of tracks. I'll score this a Bowtide 7. So let me know what you think of any and all of these projects in the comment section below. What do you thought of my score, my Bowtide score? Anything all in that comment section below. But other than that, I'm Dakota from Bowtie Media, and I'll see you guys in another video.